Him. I need Him every day. Give God some praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I don't know about you, but I'm excited to be in the house of God today. I'm excited to be here with all you guys. I'm excited that you all decided to join in and worship with us this morning. Listen, I pray that you felt that energy just like we felt this energy here. God is doing some amazing things. Whether you're shut in, whether you feel shut out, trust in God with all your heart and lean not unto your own understanding and all your ways acknowledge Him. And He will direct you. He will lead you. Amen, amen. Well, listen, for those of you who are here, I'm excited to see you all. I'm excited to have some people in the building, just a few of our leaders and a few of our ministry servants. For those of you who are watching, thank you for joining in. I believe that God has a word for you today. I believe that he's going to speak to your heart. He's going to speak to your situation and you're going to be blessed. Hey, say amen if you receive that. Amen, amen, amen. Well, well, I'm Pastor Lisa, as most of you know. Some of you may not, who maybe you're tuning in for the first time. I'm Pastor Lisa, and I'm one of the lead pastors here at the Remedy Church. Um, amen, amen. And it is my honor to stand here in the presence of God and these beautiful people just to share a message, um, just share a word that I believe is very relevant for the house today. Well, listen, you guys can go ahead and be seated. Go ahead and be seated. I want to honor my husband, Pastor Deontay, Pastor Lav. I love you. He pushes me to be great every time he pushes me. I said, baby, I don't think I'm ready. He said, baby, you done preached the sermon like six times. How much more time do you need? I'm like, okay, well, if you think so, he said, yeah. So I, I appreciate a, a man of God who just continues to speak into my life and to push me to be greater. So I love you, baby. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so, 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 so most of you guys know, and some of you guys know, but, but I'm a mother. I'm a mother and I have, my husband and I, we have two children. And um, I don't know about you, but my kids, they love to watch movies. They love to watch movies. They get it from their father and I. Any, our perfect date, if you ask us right now, what's your perfect date? At the same time, I promise you, we'd probably be like, oh, movie night, a night out, a night to the movies, whatever it is. So our kids, they, they've taken after us. They call it spend time together. They go, mom, we're just gonna go upstairs and spend time together. And I'm like, all right, that means they're about to watch a movie. So my kids love to watch movies, and I don't know about you, anybody here who has children, but they like to watch the same movies over and over, and I'm like, can we? So my husband is against same, he's against repeating. He's like, if it's my turn to pick a movie, we're always gonna watch a new movie. And I'm like, well, babe, just let them watch what they want. He's like, no, we're watching a new movie today. We're not watching Moana, we're not, and you watch it so much that it just gets in your spirit. I'll be at the grocery store. Somebody's like, oh, well, here, thank you, ma'am. I'm like, you're welcome. I'm like, is this Maui? Like, what is happening? Wait, where am I? So it just gets in your spirit. You start scripting, but my kids like to watch the same movies over and over. And one of the movies that they love watching is Cars. They love watching the story and the saga of Lightning McQueen. He's a race car. It's just about a bunch of cars who are racing and finding their way through life, but they're all race cars. So in Cars 3, primarily, that's, that's their favorite movie, Cars 3. Um, in Cars 3, Lightning McQueen, he's the fastest car around. He's been racing for years. Nobody can beat him. And in Cars 3, he's kind of hit a little bump in the road. He hit a little bump in the road, and his sponsor is telling him, hey, Lightning, I think it's time for you to hang it up. And he's like, well, I, I feel like I, I got more in me. I feel like I can do some more stuff. Just give me a chance. He said, let me do this last race. He said, if I lose, then I hang it up. But if I win, I get to decide when I'm done. That's, those are his stand. I get to decide when I'm done. So he said, okay, I'll let you go, but you got to take this trainer with you. The trainer's name is Cruz Ramirez. She's like one of my favorite. I don't know if it's because she has a Latina name. I don't know what it is, but I'm like, ooh, Cruz, yes. So Cruz Ramirez, she's this fiery, bright yellow trainer. And she's training Lightning. She's working with Lightning. She said, come on, Lightning, you got to do this. She's more up to speed, more with the modern things that are going on. And then Lightning sees something in her. And he says, wait a minute. He says, are you a racer? She said, no, 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 I have my shot and I miss it. No, I can't do that, Lightning. No, I'm a trainer. People keep telling me that I'm a trainer. He said, but you look like a racer. 
He said, no, no, no. She said, no, I'm a trainer. I'm a trainer. So they're working together. They're working together. And all of a sudden, something snaps in her. And she says, I think I can do this. She puts on the mud flap. She puts on the tire. She does everything. She says, I think I can do this. Lightning. She goes, but let me ask you a question. And I'm over there doing the dishes, doing the dishes. And she starts saying this. And there's, that's one of those moments where you're like, what did that just say? Is there a message right there? She says, can I ask you something, Mr. McQueen? What was it like when you showed up to your first race? How did you know that you could do it? You had all these race cars to the left and to the right with all these roaring engines. How did you know that you could do it? And McQueen looked at her and he said, I don't know. I, I just never thought I couldn't. And when I heard that, when I heard that, that whole Disney Pixar introduction, when I heard that, I thought about David. Yeah, I thought about David and, and, and that's who I want to talk about today. Now, most of us, when we hear the story of David, um, most of us, we automatically think about Goliath. You think about David and you think about Goliath. You think about the battle and everything that's taking place and everything that's going on. And that's normal and that's natural. Um, but, but, but sometimes, what we don't do is we don't look at the process that David went through to get to the giant. So today, I want to talk about the journey to the giant. The journey to the giant. So I don't want to assume that everybody's from church and everybody knows who David is. So David is, is the son of Jesse. He's the son of Jesse. He's the youngest of eight brothers. I know somebody was like, oh my God, I can relate. I got all these. Who, who, who's the young? If you're the, if you're the youngest, just type in like, yes, pastor. I know I'm the youngest. All the big brothers in here. Y'all know whoever's the youngest. So he's the youngest of eight brothers. He's a shepherd and he's also the next anointed king of Israel. The prophet Samuel came and, and anointed David when he was young, young, but a teenager, a young boy, anointed David to be the next king of Israel. Now that didn't take place for another 15 years. Yeah, the promise was spoken over his life, but it didn't come to pass for another 15 years. Years. Yeah, somebody may be saying, Pastor, God spoke something over my life, but it hasn't come to pass. Just wait. He's anointed, but he hasn't quite yet been appointed. So, so, so the business that God promised you, don't give up. You're anointed, but you probably haven't been appointed yet. Yeah, the marriage that God said will kind of get things together. Yeah, you're anointed for that, but it just, the, the, the appointed time hasn't quite showed itself. So that's where David is. He's, he's anointed to be the next king of Israel, but he hasn't quite been Appointed, And he's also King Saul's personal minstrel, musician. He's King Saul's. So, so at this time, King Saul is going through a lot. Scholars believe he was going through some type of mental decline, some type of mental degeneration. So maybe an Alzheimer's or a dementia. It says that evil spirits would torment him as he was asleep and he couldn't get sleep. So he said, find me a minstrel. Go get me somebody. And it was David. So David would come with his anointed, not yet appointed self and still operate in where God placed him. He would come and he would play the harp for Saul and Saul would fall asleep. And that is where we meet David in chapter 17 of 1 Samuel. The beginning verses, I, I, I don't want to read the whole entire Bible to you. I want you guys to go home and I want you guys online. I want you guys to go home and kind of read through, dig through. So we're going to go through um, the scripture, but I want to give you kind of a synopsis of what's going on in verses 1 through 11. So verses 1 through 11, you got the Philistines and you got the Israelites. You got the Philistines and you got the Israelites and they're ready to go to battle. They're ready to go all out war with each other. But one of the Philistine soldiers says, hey, I have an idea. Send your best guy, send your best soldier to fight me and we'll do away with all this bloodshed, all this unnecessary mess. Send your best soldier to fight me. Whoever loses will serve the other one. Sounds good. Okay, save some of my guys, you save some of your guys, lose one guy, that's cool. The only, the catch is that this man that's suggesting, this man that's taunting and tormenting happens to be their champion warrior. He's undefeated, he's undisputed, never lost a battle, or so he thinks. Never lost a battle, and 
He just happens to be 10 feet tall. He's a giant. And somebody said, oh, snap. <laughs> no, thank you, Pastor. The Israelites have nobody to match up against this giant. Average sized men, and believe it or not, some of these men are probably young because at that time, you only had to be 20 to go into the army. So they're looking for young, well-abled men. So you got a, a, a bunch of average sized young men and nobody can stand up to this giant and they're terrified. So that's the beginning of the story. That's where we see the giant is taunting him. Nobody to challenge them. In verses 12 through 16, we're given another intro to David. I know I'm teaching, but y'all are doing amazing. Stay with me. We're doing another intro to David. And we see, we're reminded that he's the youngest of the sons of Jesse. And he's back and forth between these duties. He's a shepherd and he's a musician. He's a shepherd and he's a musician. It says that he goes back and forth day and night to fulfill both of his responsibilities. And that is where I want us to start today. If you can, go with me to 1 Samuel 17. 1 Samuel 17 online. And we're going to go with verse 17. It says, one day, Jesse said to David, take this basket of roasted grain and these 10 loaves of bread and carry them quickly to your brothers and give these 10 cuts of cheese to their captain. See how your brothers are getting along and bring back a report on how they're doing. So what's happening here is that Jesse's three oldest sons, Eliab, Abinadab, and Shimei, they are in Saul's army. So he tells David, hey, get a little care package together. Get something together for your brothers and take it to them. Go, 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 give it to the captain and go check and see how they're doing. Yeah, make sure that they're okay. Make sure that they don't need anything. David was on assignment. So many times we hear the story of David and Goliath and we, we want to hurry up and get to the giant. We want to hurry up and get to the battle. We want to hurry up and see what the outcome is that we fail to see or don't even realize that David was on assignment from his father. His father said, take this stuff, go check on your brothers and see how they're doing. So many times we're trying to get to the end result. So many times we're trying to go up against this battle that we neglect the assignment. We don't do what God is calling us to do in the right way. And so when we get there, we fall. When we get there, we can't do the right things. But David was on assignment and it wasn't newsflash. It wasn't Goliath. It wasn't. So, so let's keep going. Let's keep, walk, let's keep working through. Verse 20 says, So David got up early in the morning and left the flock with the keeper. He took the supplies and went as Jesse had commanded him. What I want you guys to remember right now, I want you guys to put a pin, and I want you guys to remember the word order. For those of you online, I want you to type order in the chat. Just go ahead, type, type, type. Those of you here, say order. Say order. Type order in the chat. I want you to remember the word order. So as, so as the scripture says, David gets everything together. He goes, leaves the, the sheep with whoever they're supposed to be watched by, and he goes to the battlefield. When he gets to the battlefield, he begins to carry out his assignment. David left his things with the innkeeper of supplies and hurried out to the rank to greet his brothers. As he was talking with them, Goliath and the Philistine champion from Gath came out from Philistine ranks. Then David heard him shout his usual taunt to the army. So, 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 so let's go back to David's assignment real quick. I promise I'm bringing it to you. Let's go back to David's assignment. He was supposed to take food and check on his brothers. Take food and check on his brothers. It said he left the things with the keeper and the supplies. He took the food. And he ran out to the ranks to meet his brothers. And he's checking on his brothers. As he's checking on his brothers, he just so happens to hear Goliath start in his usual mess. He just so happens to hear Goliath taunting and challenging the Israelites. He just so, he's just walking in his assignment and he just so happens to hear. Okay, so how many of you ever just walk in in your assignment and you just happen to walk into something? Yeah, I'm just trying to go about my daily life. I'm just trying to do what God has called me to do. But then you walk into something. Yeah, I'm just at work, Pastor. I was just on lunch. Next thing you know, I see a coworker crying. She's talking about a marriage. Now I got a minister. I'm just in my assignment, but I happen to walk into something. 
I went by to visit my mom. I'm on a call with a family member. Next thing I know, they're talking about depression and anxiety. Now I got to figure out, are they going to harm themselves? All I want to do is be a good daughter. I'm walking in my assignment, but I happen to walk into something. See, the beauty of walking into something when you're in your assignment is God will always give you what you need to be successful. Whether it's wisdom that you need, whether it's discernment that you need, whether it's patience or peace that you need, whatever you need, God will give you as long as you continue to walk in your assignment. See, when you're walking in your assignment, you don't have to go looking for another one. You don't have to try to figure out what I'm supposed to Just do what God has called you to do, yes, sir. like David. Do what your father has instructed you to do, and everything else will fall into place. Walk in your assignment. As we continue to maneuver through the text, I, I want to begin to point out certain obstacles that David dealt with on his journey to the giant. Verse 24, as soon as the Israelites' army saw him, they began to run away in fright. Have you seen the giant? The men asked. I mean, he comes out here every day to defy Israel. Have you seen him? He's huge. Have you seen him? We can't do anything with that. So, 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 so David is checking on his brothers and all of a sudden he hears these men talking in fear. And that's the first thing that we see David encounter on his journey. And that's fear. Yeah, these men, these soldiers, they're, they're warriors. They're supposed to be on the front line doing their duty. Yeah, they've been called to protect and serve, but they're operating in fear. Yeah, they can't fully fulfill their purpose because they're crippled and healed by fear. Yeah, they can't do, they can't, they can't think the right way because they're crippled. They're withdrawing weapons too quickly because they're crippled by fear. They can't fulfill their obligation because they're crippled by fear. Be careful when you allow fear to stop you from walking in God's purpose. And not only your fear, but fear of others. Yes, yeah, because their fear has them stuck where they are. Their fear has them in the same living conditions and, and, and in the same circle of debt. Their fear won't allow them to think outside the box. Their fear only sees defeat as the option. So be careful when you allow the fear of others to feed into your spirit and to dictate your journey through the giant, to the giant. So first we see fear. Then we move on. And, 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 and David begins to talk to these soldiers. He's talking to these soldiers and, he, and, and he's saying, who is this? Who is this Philistine? Who is this uncircumcised? You ever get so mad at somebody, you start calling out their mess? Like, who is this? Oh, per who is this? With her hair looking all crazy. Who is this dude with his missing teeth? You get so mad at somebody. You get so confused. You start calling out, who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he would dare to defy the Lord's army? What's to be done about the man? Like, like what, what, what's going to happen if I knock this dude out? And he says, oh, oh, David, David, listen, dude, like, like, like Saul said, whoever can defeat this guy. Oh, he said he's going to give him all the money. He's going to make him rich. Not only that, but he's going to give him one of his daughters. It's probably the real fine one. You know, Alicia, the one that we all been looking at. Yeah, he's probably going to give. I don't know who Alicia is. Alicia, if you're watching, praise God. But but he said he's probably going to get, you know, he's going to give him one of his daughters. And not only that, they don't even have to pay taxes. And David is like, OK, so what's up? He's like, OK, where I sign up? And he's like, so, so, so. And he's like, so, so say that again. He's like, no, you heard me. Like, like you get Alicia, you, you get the money and you don't have to pay taxes. So then as he's having this conversation, his brother overhears. Yeah, his brother Eliab, his oldest brother Eliab overhears. Let's go to verse 28. Now Eliab, his oldest brother, heard him when he spoke to the men. Eliab's anger burned against David and he said, why is it that you have come down? And with whom have you left those few sheep in the wilderness? I myself know your insolence and the wickedness of your heart, for you have come down just to see the battle. Now, all of that is one verse. And if we move too fast, we'll miss it. So what I want to do, I want to go line by line. Eliab, now he's the oldest of all Jesse's sons, right? So he's the oldest. He's 
supposedly the next to inherit everything, the next to inherit the throne, the one who's going to carry on the family name. He's the oldest brother. And you have to remember that in Bible days, there was a lot of sibling rivalry, especially amongst boys, amongst brothers, amongst men. There was a lot of sibling rivalry because they're trying to fight. You remember Jacob and Esau. Yeah, you remember Joseph and his brothers. Let's go back to the first, Cain and Abel. Yeah, so, so sibling rivalry has been something that's been going on in the Bible, and the same is going on right here. So, so, so you have the youngest brother coming down, and not only is he the youngest, but the Bible shows us a lot of times that some about that youngest child finds favor with the father. We don't know what it is. The youngest child sometimes happens to find favor with the father. And the same is true with Eliab and David. So Eliab sees David coming into his space, coming into his place. And he said, why are you here? Like, why have you come down here? It says immediately he was irritated. Isn't this is my area, my place to shine, my arena. Isn't it enough that's your father's favorite? I mean, isn't it enough that he, he put you over his most prized possession and his sheep. Isn't it enough that you're the next anointed king? Now you got to show your face in my space. Isn't it enough that you graduated from college? Now you want to do something else? Isn't it enough that you open the business? Now you want to come over here trying to help other people? Isn't it enough that you got your life together? Now you over, isn't it enough? You're always trying to do something. Anybody just feel torn down sometimes? by relatives or people, all you're trying to do is make it. All you're trying to do is go from glory to glory and do what God has called you to do, but there's always the naysayers. Isn't it enough? He says, isn't it enough? You've come down here into my place, into my area. He said, what have you done with those few sheep? What about your responsibilities, David? What about the things that you're supposed to do? You're all over here. What's going on in your business? What's going on in your area? Remember the word I told you guys to write and type. I said, remember the word order. Remember the word order. Because before David came, remember, he got everything in order. He, he, he got up early. He left the sheep with who they were supposed to be with. And he went out. He operated in order. See, we have to operate in order because what's going to happen is people are going to come up and question you. As you're walking in your assignment and as you're fulfilling your purpose, people are going to say, you're over here talking about my marriage. What about you and your husband? Well, little do you know, we've been through counseling and we're communicating a lot better. We're operating in order. You talk about you want to kill debt and kill finances. Well, what about you? You still got credit cards. Yeah, but I already paid off two and my house will be paid off next week. I'm just trying to operate in order. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but, but you, your children, everything going on with you. That's okay. You and your singleness. Don't worry about me and my singleness. I'm keeping myself. I'm not settling for myself. I'm not settling for nothing less then God's best. I'm operating in order. My pastor used to always say, don't get people a stick to hit you with. Yeah, don't be walking and doing whatever, but you haven't taken care of your business and your assignment. Operate in order. So I know not only is his brother questioning him, because that's the second thing that we see David come up against. First, we see fear. Now in his journey to this giant, we see questioning. People are unsure, people are trying to figure out what's going on. You ever feel like, why well, boy, isn't my business? Why are you trying to figure out what I'm doing? I'm just over here in my house, minding my business, paying off my debt, taking care of my kids, going to work every day. I'm just doing my thing. Why are you over here trying to come and figure out what I'm doing? Fear and questioning. But then it says that his brother, I myself know your insolence and wickedness of your heart, for you have come down here in order to see the battle. I myself know your insolence. I myself know your history. Yeah, I know what you used to be. I myself know how you used to talk. I myself know who you used to sleep with. I myself know, the, know what you used to sell on the corner and the wickedness of your heart. Although, and the crazy thing is this, although we, we don't know much about David, Right now, what we do know is that the Bible says in, 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 in Samuel 13, 14, the Lord has sought for himself a man after his own heart. The Lord has appointed him ruler. So regardless of what people want to call you and regardless of what people want to bring out, know who God has called you to be. Know what God has called you to. 
Yeah, don't let people bring up your past and bring it to your future and try to bring you back off your journey. Know where God is leading you. It doesn't matter what you used to be. It doesn't matter what you used to say. It doesn't matter who you used to be with. What matters is what God calls you right now. Know who you are and walk in that. Because believe me, on your journey to this giant, whatever your giant is, people are going to question you. Yeah, be mindful of when people try to put a label on you due to their inability to understand your assignment. They don't know what's going on, so they want to call it as they see it. But little do they know God is working some stuff in the back. How did he get that promotion at that job? He must have slept his way to the top. No, you weren't here when I came in on weekends. You weren't here when I worked the overtime that they asked me to do. I did it the right way. Why are they taking in all these foster kids and doing They just want the money. All these people that they're trying to take care of and all these things that they want to help, all these family members they want to help, they just want recognition. No, 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 you don't know what my husband has called, what God has called my husband and I to do in this season. Don't question my assignment. Don't question my calling and don't bring up what I used to be. God's blood covered that and he called me something else. He changed my name. Remember what God called you and walk in that. Don't allow questioning and accusations to throw you off when you're walking in your assignment. So, 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 so now we see David is dealing with fear. He's dealing with questioning and, and all this thing, all these things are happening and Saul gets win. King Saul gets win. And he says, man, bring that young, bring the young guy to me. Let me see what all the hubbub is about. So David goes to Saul and Saul says, what's up? He's like, man, man, listen, don't worry about it. Fret not. Let not your heart be troubled. I got this. I got this. And I can imagine Saul looking at him like, huh, huh, what? Who are you? What makes you think? Yeah, have, have you seen the giant? Have you seen him? He's been fighting since he was a boy, David. You're only a boy. You're not ready for this, David. You're not experienced enough, David. No, 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 no. You can't do this. David says, surely I can defeat this giant. He said, no, 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 you can't do this, David. You're not ready. He's been doing this his whole life. All he knows is fighting and you just step on the scene. You can't do this. You can't run this ministry at 32 years old. You don't have enough experience to do it. Yeah, you can't father those children because your dad wasn't in your life. What makes you think you can stand up to him? All you know is poverty and debt. What makes you think you can open up a business? What makes you think you can open up two businesses? What makes you think you can open up three businesses? You don't even know that. You don't even have the experience. What makes you think you can help the homeless people? You haven't been doing enough stuff yourself. What makes you think? So not only do we see fear and questioning on this journey, but now we see the doubt. And you have to watch out for the doubt. You have to make sure that you trust in God. You have to remember, look back over your life and remember the things that God has brought you through. The same God who brought you through that will bring you through this. Yeah, the same God that brought you through the drugs will bring you through the depression. The same God that helped you get over those men will help you get over these money issues. Trust God. David said, the Lord who saved me from the paw of the lion and the paw of the bear will save me from the hand of this Philistine. Yeah, the same God that delivered me then will deliver me now. The same God who did it before will do it now. The same God who promised me then will promise me now. The same God that was walking with me through that will walk with me through this. The same God that went and got my husband will go and get my son. I know because I trust in God. What did they say? Trust in the Lord, right? Trust in God. The crazy thing is that after David explains all of this stuff to Saul, Saul feels the need to then insert his contribution. Okay, so you think you can do this? Oh, you think you can do that? Okay, cool, cool. Here, put on my armor. He tries to clothe him in his armor. The armor that didn't work for him. Yeah, the armor that didn't give him enough juice to go out there and fight Goliath. You, you, you want me to put on your weak armor that you can't do nothing with and you already doubting what I could do? I talk, I spoke to some of the ladies um, a, a couple weeks ago and I told them a couple things about armor. 
I said that armor is heavy, so you have to be prepared to, to, to battle with. You got to build up your strength. Not only that, I said that armor is restricting. Certain things that you used to be able to do when you have on your armor, you can't do. And now I'm talking about the armor of God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you have on that belt of truth, you can't tell. You can only tell but so many lies. Yeah, when you're walking with the breastplate of white righteousness, some things that you come up against, you're not going to be able to do because armor is restricting. You can't do certain things. So, so what worked for mama and them is not going to work for you. Yeah, what they used to do in the way that you used to talk, that's not going to work for you in this season. But I also told them that armor was tailor made. That it was made to fit a specific body. Back in the day, the welder would beat the armor and try it to make sure that it fit that soldier perfectly. God has created your own special armor for you. Your armor is tailor-made. You can't put on somebody else's armor. You can't take on somebody else's experience. Yeah, the way mama and them used to handle stuff, you can't handle it that way. Your armor is different. Yeah, the way they used to handle money and debt, you can't do it that way because your armor is different. Yeah, the way, that, the way that they used to raise their kids and let them do, you can't do that because your assignment and where God is taking you is different. You can't put on anybody else's armor. You have to put on the armor that God has given you. David says, I can't put this on. He said, I don't know. I haven't been trained in this. He said, I haven't been trained with this armor. I don't know how to operate in this. And that's how you should feel. You said your husband cheated, well, cheat back. That's just what you're supposed to do to get over one man, to get up under another. That's not going to work for you. You said the baby mama's tripping. That's okay. Just show her who he picked. Remind her. Of, I, that's not going to work for you, kingdom woman. That's not going to work for you. You said she made you mad, man. Go off. Go show up. Tell her, tell her about yourself. That's not going to work for you. All that slick talking and doing everything else that you used to do. That's not going to work for you. God has created a special armor for you. God has created a new armor. He's doing a new thing in you. All things have passed away. Put on your armor. The armor that God has created for you. It's so funny when, when people who can't seem to get up and fight the battles themselves, always want to have something to say. Always want to try to give you the best advice. I know you said you and your husband are going through, but maybe you should, this is your third marriage. You can't help me. I know you said that you want to get out of debt, but Ma, you ain't got nothing in savings. You can't help me. Know what God has called you to do in this season. Put on the armor that he has made specifically for you. Because the last thing that David came up against was misdirection. Somebody coming and trying to tell him how to do something. Try to tell him to operate in something that God did not train him to operate in. Don't allow fear, questioning, doubt, and misdirection dictate your journey to your giant. Don't let people put their armor on you because that is now how God has trained you to defeat your giant. I don't know what your giant is. We haven't even got to the giant today. But whatever it is, don't minimize the journey. Chapter 17, 1 Samuel chapter 17 is 58 verses long. You want to know how many verses the battle takes place in? Two. Yeah, David and Goliath, the battle between them, that takes place in two verses. What does that tell me? Don't underestimate your journey. Don't be so quick to get to the giant that when you get there, you fall. Don't show up to the giant with somebody else's armor on. Don't show up to the giant with fear in your heart. Don't show up to the giant questioning your assignment. Mm -mm. You can't do it. Don't underestimate your journey. I know that we all have giants that we face. I know we all have things that are going on, especially now in the world, now in our lives. Some people are losing family. They got to get through life without a mom. That's a giant. They got to figure out how to pick up and, and start over after losing their business. That's a giant issues with your kids and your past that's a giant we all got giants 
anger, depression, anxiety, suicidal thoughts, confusion with your sexuality, those are giants. But put on your armor. Walk in your assignment. And I promise you that God will see you through. I promise you that when you get up to that giant like David did, you can stand flat-footed. Get your sling and your stone. It's over. Yeah. It's over. Operate in order. Operate in your assignment. And don't underestimate your giant. For those of you who are watching, maybe you have some giants in your life. Maybe you say, Pastor, that's me. Pastor, I can't get through this divorce. Pastor, I can't raise this young man. Pastor, I don't know what to do. Call on him. Trust in him. He's the only one that's going to lead you in the right way. He's the only one that's going to guide you the right way. And in order to hear him, in order to be guided by him and the Holy Spirit, you have to accept him. So if you're watching today and you don't know Jesus Christ, this is an amazing day to get right. There's a number right below me. You see, call the number. There's somebody waiting to speak with you. There's somebody waiting to pray with you. There's somebody waiting to help you on this journey to your giant, but you can't do it alone. You need Jesus. You need the Holy Spirit. You need the wisdom because some days it's going to feel like hell. Some days it's going to feel like you can't do it, like you can't, like you just want to give up, like you just want to lay in the bed. But I promise you that God will give you everything that you need if you just accept Him. If you don't know Jesus, or if you want to join a ministry, you're saying, Pastor, I don't have anybody that I can pull on. My accountability is low. Become a part of Remedy Nation. Join the ministry. Let us walk with you. Let our team and our ministry and our members and the, and the family of Remedy Nation walk with you during this time. You don't have to do it by yourself. Text or call the number below. Watch God change your life. I'm so excited, I'm so grateful that God just chose to use me, that God chose to just speak through me. Did anybody get something out of that word today? I had so many conversations about what was going on. I had so many conversations about people's issues and I said, wait till Sunday. I think God is gonna speak to you. I think God is going to encourage you. So I pray that you got something. Now, before we get out of here, I just want to thank you all. I want to thank you all for your giving. Giving has been amazing. I mean, you guys are paying your tithes. You guys are giving offering. You guys should be so excited. I am excited. When I see giving, I get excited because all I could think of is, oh my God, people are trusting God. Yes, I'm excited because it takes money to run a building. It takes money to put on a production. It takes money. We're preparing to come back, Remedy Nation. We're preparing to open up these doors. Yeah, that takes manpower and that takes, that takes a lot of stuff that, yes, we need money to run ministry, but I'm excited because it means that people are trusting God more. And one of the hardest things sometimes to trust God with is our money. So I thank you for paying your tithes today. You can pay, there's three ways to give. You can give online, you can give on our app, and you can text to give. But give today, continue to give and sow into this ministry. If you believe in the ministry that God has put my husband and I over, I pray that you would continue to sow. I pray that you would continue to pay your tithes and your offerings because God will bless you. I want you to get everything that God has for you. And it begins with trusting God with every bit of everything. I thank you guys for tuning in. Listen, don't forget to tune in for our mid week service. I hope that you guys are enjoying midweek. Are you guys enjoying midweek service? I mean, my husband is doing an amazing job at midweek. So, so my pastor used to always say, if you, if you miss Wednesdays, if you miss midweek, you miss half of what God has to say. And, and pastor and I, we believe the same thing. So get your word. Sometimes it takes that little bit of word to get you over the hump. It takes that refresher to get you through whatever it is that you're going through that day until we get back on Sundays. So don't forget to tune into Bible study at seven o'clock every Wednesday. And of course, we want you guys to follow us on social media. 
Listen, follow us on Instagram, Facebook, share this live, subscribe to our YouTube channel. We love to hear from you. We love you guys so much, Father. We thank you for your word. We thank you for just having your way today. God, whatever giant we are facing, Father, thank you that we have the ability to go up against it, to stand flat-footed and to defeat it, Father, because the victory is already ours. Thank you that you've given us everything that we need. Father, I pray a blessing over every person who listened to that word. I pray that you will meet them where they are, Father God, and continue to build their faith. We love you, God, and we thank you. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Listen, Remedy Nation, we love you so much, but God loves you so much more. I can't wait to see you all next week. Thank you so much for joining us. Have an amazing, amazing week. Amen.